it's Megan here and as you guys know for the past couple months a lot of us who sew have been making mask after mask after mask and with that comes trying lots of different patterns and lots of different shapes and lots of different fabrics so I have tried probably 10 different types of mask, mask patterns and different types of materials that would feel best on the face so I know I have a few mask videos already up but I decided to make one more with a slightly adjusted pattern for the curved curve style mask. Um, I really do feel like this fits better around the nose and underneath the chin. Um, so I made six different sizes. We have from a child small all the way up to an adult large attached in the description below. And I'm gonna take you through, the steps are almost the same. Um, I added in a nose bridge, but I'm gonna take you through the steps one by one really quick and then you'll be able to make your own perfect fitted mask. To make this mask, I recommend using a 100% cotton for both the outside layer and the lining layer. For the lining and the outside fabric, you're going to need an 8x8 eight eight inch square that's double layered. You will also need either 7 inches of 1 quarter inch wide elastic or a shoelace to tie the mask around your face. As you can see here, I already printed out my pattern from the description box below and I'll be using an adult medium. I've already cut my lining. And when you print out your pattern from the PDF files below, the line that says cut here actually says fold here, and there'll be a measurement attached to it so you can measure that and make sure you've printed out your pattern correct to size. So one of the biggest questions I tend to get in the comments or by email is how do you actually find the pattern link? Um, YouTube has recently kind of changed the formatting of their description box and it makes it a little bit harder to find. If you're on a laptop or a desktop, you want to scroll down beneath the video and find the little words that say show more. That's how you're going to be able to drop down the rest of the description. Once you've got the description box open, scroll down a little bit. Usually underneath the supplies, I have a um, link for the pattern. And while you're clicking around there, if you haven't already, you can very easily subscribe to the channel by clicking the red YouTube button in the corner. Now, if you're on a phone or an iPad, finding that description box can be even more tricky. So I want you to look at this screen and find that little drop down arrow that my big blue arrow is pointing to. You're gonna click on that arrow and the description box will drop down below. And once you find the description box, just scroll down underneath the supplies, there will be a PDF link to the pattern. Now that you've got your pattern all printed out, let's go ahead and start cutting. I've got my fabric folded in half and I'm gonna place a pin at each of the corners to prepare to cut around my pattern. Each of the different pattern sizes has a grain line drawn towards the front curve. This will help you line up your pattern if you have any kind of directional print with the fabric that you're using. Here's a quick tip if you're new to sewing. You wanna buy one pair of nice scissors and save them for all your fabric cutting because anytime you use a pair of sharp fabric scissors on paper, it will dull them and it'll make cutting out your fabric a lot harder and make it less accurate. Now that I'm finished cutting and I'm gonna take the two pieces of fabric and place them side by side, you can see I made sure to fold my fabric so the two patterns are a mirror image. Take the two pieces that you just cut out and place them touching print to print. We're gonna place about four pins right along that front curve of the mask. And now let's do the same to our lining fabric. The first sewing step we're going to do is to sew that curve at a quarter of an inch. Heading over to our sewing machine, we're gonna sew the entire curve at a quarter of an inch, or basically have the right side of the fabric lined up with the right side of the presser foot. I'm also using a straight stitch with a length of three. For this step, I used an aqua colored thread so it would really pop against the fabric and you'd be able to very easily see where I sewed, but I'd strongly recommend using a color that matches your project. To finish the seam, we're going to take the scissors and cut some small pie slices out of the seam allowance, so that way it bends easier once it's in the mask shape. I placed pie slices in both the lining and the outside fabric. I've preheated my iron on a cotton setting with the steam activated. I'm going to press the front curve of the mask with both the lining and the outside layer. Once I press the curve from the inside, I fold it back in half and give it one final press. Remember that line on the pattern that says fold here? Well, we're going to take the edge of the lining and fold it approximately a half inch once and then a half an inch twice and press it in place. The lining should now be folded where indicated on the pattern. 
Let's take her over to the machine and sew those fold lines in place. Again, we're using a straight stitch with a length of three. And the reason we're stitching these in place is to create a pocket for our filter when our mask is completed. If you're new to my channel, one thing I always like to impress on everybody is to make sure that you adequately press your project. It will really up the professionalism value at the end. So I'm pressing these folds just one more time to make sure they're nice and crisp. With my lining all pressed, I'm ready to join the outside layer and the lining layer. I'm gonna take that center seam of the lining layer, flip it right side out, and line it up with the center seam of the outside layer. Place a pin at both the top and the bottom of that center seam through both layers of the mask. Hopefully now you can see that we're lining up the bottom line of the mask as well as the top line of the mask. So I'm gonna put a few more pins in place because our next step is to sew both of those edges together. Once again, we're gonna use that trusty quarter inch wide seam allowance and a straight stitch with a length of three. And sew across the entire top of the mask from edge of the lining to the other edge of the lining. And then we're gonna go ahead and repeat this step on the bottom edge of the mask. So here's one more professional trick for you. Before we flip inside out, we're gonna take our scissors and put some small slits in the seam allowance for the seam we just sewed. Anytime you have a seam that's gonna curve on the body or move with the body, you need to release some of the tension from the fabric. But of course, be careful not to clip through the seam that you just sewed or else it'll all come apart once it's on your face. See here how much easier this seam bends now? We want that to happen when it goes from your nose to under your eye to your ear. Once we're finished putting the slits in both the top and the bottom seam allowance, go ahead and flip your mask right side out. Our next step is to very carefully press the edges of the mask. We wanna make sure that both the lining and the outside fabric are even and neither one is rolling towards the inside or the outside. You're also going to take that extra fabric that's the outside of the mask and take the edge and press it up a quarter of an inch. Keep working your way around all the edges of the mask. You wanna go across the entire bottom and across the entire top. And your goal is for that lining to sit flat inside of your mask. If you sew quite often like I do, you'll know there's nothing better than when a project presses up perfectly and it's nice and crisp. And once we feel like we finished pressing the edges, we're gonna fold it in half one more time, making sure that lining is pressed nice and smooth towards the inside curve and give it a final flat press. You can see now that our mask is really starting to take shape. Our final pressing step here is take the extra outside edge and fold it in a quarter inch and then a half an inch and press it flat. This is gonna create the casing where we're gonna put either our tie or our elastic. Once it's pressed, we're gonna take it over to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew right along the fold, right where I'm pointing here. Using our trusty straight stitch, we're gonna stitch close our casing on each end of the mask. And now it's time to insert our nose bridge. I bought these on Etsy and they're sticky on one side. You can see that I marked the center so it's easier for me to place them inside of the mask. I like to place the nose bridge on the inside layer of the mask. One thing I will say about this type of nose bridge is you do have to be gentle in terms of constantly unfolding and folding it. If you do that over and over again and wear your mask very often, it will eventually snap in half, but they are extremely easy to replace and they are very expensive. So if you wanna get your own pack, I definitely recommend it. After having made about 700 masks at this point, I have to say it's not necessary to have a nose bridge. I think the nose bridge works really well if you wear glasses or sunglasses often and it prevents some fog from going up into your glasses. Me, I don't wear glasses regularly, so I don't find the nose bridge helps in any way and kind of makes the mask more uncomfortable. It's totally up to you. The nice thing about this pattern being slightly more curved at the nose and under the chin is it stays in place just fine without the nose bridge but the nose bridge can always be an added layer of protection. You can see here that I've finished flipping it right side out again, and I'm sliding the nose bridge to the top of the mask. Another personal preference is whether or not you put interfacing in your mask. I found it harder to breathe, but again, totally up to you. When it comes to keeping the mask on your face, you again have a couple of different options. I'm showing you first how to just string some shoelaces through those casings we just created. You can use the shoelaces to tie the mask behind your head.
but now I'll show you my more preferred method, which is to use a piece of quarter inch wide elastic. My general rule of thumb is to cut the elastic to about seven inches. Some people need less and some people need more. I take a safety pin and I thread it through the casing until it comes out on the other side. Once you've got the elastic worked through both sides of the casing, you're gonna take it over to the sewing machine and close the elastic with either a zigzag stitch or use a hand sewing needle to sew it closed. But just make sure that it's really strong so that way you don't have to worry about the elastic snapping once it's on your face. Our last step is we're gonna slide the elastic loop so that little knot where it's sewn together is hidden inside the casing. And congratulations, your mask is all done. But wait, I've got a special bonus before we move on to our fit test. I've got another video on my channel where I show you how to make an adorable pouch that can attach to your keyring, where you can keep your mask, so that way, in case you forgot one, you've always got a spare on hand. Okay, so here we are at the end. Here is our mask. It's got a lining on the inside. We've got our nose bridge, and I'm gonna show you really quick how this fits on my face. So that way you can kind of see, this is an adult medium how an adult medium would fit on, I, I mean, I consider myself average. I'm not really 100% sure what average is. So we're gonna go here. See, it goes right around my ear. I used a seven inch piece of elastic. I tend to like my mask a slight bit tighter than most people. Like I like it like really tight, but I don't wear it for a long period of time. So I think when you're wearing it for a long period of time, a looser elastic is better. But see how I'm talking right now and it's not really moving on my nose. I can tighten that, I can put glasses on or sunglasses on and I'd be fine. Comes in really nice underneath the chin, not too tight, nice and comfortable. And I also like how on the side, it kind of juts away from your mouth ever so slightly. So you have lots of nice room to breathe. So you can see, fits really nice. And I hope you found this tutorial easy to follow and you found the fit part at the end helpful. And if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the comment section below. And as always, happy sewing.